urban environment, the struggles still existed, right? As the economy improved, the farmers no longer necessarily needed a free coinage of silver and these other things, but they did, the cities did need something, right? The urban poor needed this change and they needed the help. And that continues and arguably continues and doesn't stop even to this day. Does that make sense? Okay. Because the urban poor largely remain, oh, I'm sorry, the urban poor even as we grow um, and progress through time. But their hope was that they would be able to limit some of the problems that existed. They wanted the government to be more responsive to the people through the vote. They wanted to limit the power of the political machines. They wanted to improve the workers' rights, to clean up the cities, to end Jim Crow, right, to end segregation, to basically to make our government more democratic, right? That is their primary goal, is how do we make our government more democratic so that it actually lives up to its ideals, okay? Um, and so as a result of that, then, those progressives will seek areas of reform, both socially, politically, economically, will see conservation goals as well, okay? Um, and, and areas to try to improve the natural resources. So there's lots of different areas in which they will directly work. But like I said, they're very, very similar to the populist, okay? There's not a whole lot of difference to them. Um, other than progressives, where the populace largely failed in many areas, the progressives were successful. The populace wanted to have a direct election of the senators. They don't get that. The progressives are able to push through Congress the direct election of the senators and are able to do that through an amendment to the Constitution. Okay? Anybody know which one? Let's see, this might be like the 16? Close. 17. 17. 16th is an income tax. Oh, that's the Oh, I thought it was a more strange. So, income tax. 17th, direct election of senators. 18th. No, that's 19. It's 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. All right, so the progressives are largely influenced by a lot of things. And keep in mind, it's not, these kinds of things are not new ideas by any means whatsoever at all, okay? Um, when we look at progressive reform, there's a lot of heavily influence from Jeffersonian democracy, right? Jefferson says we need to expand our democracy out to more people. So rather than um, having this idea that you have to... Um, be one of the elite classes, right? Let's extend education so we can extend that democracy to more people. Let's buy more territory and gain more territory so we can have more people being able to vote because they have to have land in order to vote, right? It, that property qualification existed under Jefferson. Under Jackson, Jackson says we should just expand that democracy even further by eliminating property qualifications for voting, right? Now, I'm not saying Jefferson or Jackson were perfect in their democracies by any means whatsoever at all, but do they seek to expand those democracies from the first democracies that existed? Yes, okay? The populists then also seek to, dis to expand that democracy through the direct election of senators, and largely we see a lot of kind of those uh, principles of democracy. When I say democratic ideals here, I'm not talking about the Democratic Party, okay? I'm talking about the ideals of a democracy. Does that make sense? That democracies are created for the people and by the people, and it's the people that have the voice. So please make note of that, that I'm not talking about the Democratic Party because of the progressive reformers, they were not the Democrats. The progressive reformers were Republicans or members of their own progressive party. Does that make sense? Like Theodore Roosevelt will formulate after he runs as a Republican and is elected as a Republican, he will run 
for a third term in office, non-consecutive term, but a third term in office, he will run under what he calls the Bull Moose Party. It is a progressive party. Does that make sense? He doesn't win. FYI, Wilson wins. He's a Democrat. Wilson. Okay. The Republican vote was split between Taft and Teddy Roosevelt, and so therefore Wilson wins. Okay. And not Wilson as in Tom Hanks, Wilson. Ball. Okay, but nice try. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, moving forward. Okay, all right. But so we see these individuals. Um, also, these two guys, uh, William James and John Dewey, that largely advocated for greater um, change through these ideals of scientific management and through like pragmatism. And when we look at this, the put into the ideas of both uh, writing when it comes to like kind of this romantic transcendentalist writing that is very common of the day and also basically look if we want to improve our society we need to try things out right we need to try stuff and if it doesn't work it doesn't work but let's try to do things to improve our society rather than just assuming that having this kind of laissez-faire attitude that things will be better and things will continue to be maintainable. He argued um, that if we don't do something to create this change, then what's going to happen is we're going to go from having somewhat of a democracy to really having an oligarchy, a rule by the few, a rule, or a rule by the wealthy. Um, and that's something that our progressives are really trying to create change and, re and prevent that. He also argued, and they also argued, that the government should be run by experts. It shouldn't just be run by people who have these party allegiances or who get the job because, you know, they're friends or donors or whatever else. Does that make sense? That the people that are elected should be the most qualified people for the job. So in other words, no Betsy DeVos. <laughs> what he's arguing. Does that make sense? You guys obviously know my feelings about Betsy DeVos, but I think I'm pretty, like, I don't know as you would find a public school educator that would like Betsy DeVos, just saying, but, like... Considering she's a good school. Considering she, yeah, she doesn't believe in public schools, so, you know, there's that. But, anyways, moving on. So, um, but let's put people in those positions who are experts, who are going to do the job and know how to do the job because of their past experience. Not because they're career politicians, but because of the things that they have done in their life in the outside world. Does that make sense? Okay. A lot of the things that these progressive reformers are arguing for are things that I think fit very well in our society today, right? We are seeing a division of the classes even greater so than we saw in the progressive era. A growth in those that have a lot of wealth versus those that don't have a lot of wealth. And reformers that are starting to argue that we need to create greater balance in our society, right? So, yeah, Bernie Sanders is very much one of these progressives. Does that make sense? Now, not everybody agrees with what Bernie Sanders argues for, and there's some things that Bernie argues for that I personally don't agree with either. But he's calling for a greater leveling of the playing field. Does that make sense? And that's what the progressive reformers were calling for, is how do we make our democracy more democratic and level the playing field for everybody? Okay? And so, like I said, a lot of these ideals are not something that are just dead. Okay? So when we look at this, right, there were some things that caused the progressive era. I know there's a lot of stuff here, right? Okay? So when we look at this, the progressive movement is caused by the growth of the cities and the growth of industry, right? Okay? The effects of it are huge. And um, lots and lots of stuff here. We're going to be talking about some of these over the course of a couple of chapters here. So don't think that like, oh, because I'm not talking about something directly, it doesn't mean it's not coming up. But you have to understand that the progressive era is long, okay? And really, although some historians argue that it ends in 1917, you have to understand that it's 1890 to 1917, women's suffrage is part of the progressive movement. Well, women don't gain suffrage until... 
1919. It's ratified in 1920, so technically you're not wrong and you're not wrong either, okay? So you're both right. It, Congress signs off on it in 1919, August 19th of 1919, uh, and August of 1920 it is ratified by the states, Tennessee being the last state to ratify. Harry T. Burns, we'll talk about him, okay? Um, but under the, the political side of things, just really quick, some of these things, we have the secret ballot. And basically all this meant was when you go to vote, you go and you go into a little cubicle and you vote and then you bring your thing, your card back out, your voting card back out, and you drop it in a box. It gets mixed in with all the other voting, like, cards. So nobody knows how you personally voted. Does that make sense? Before this, I would have to bring my vote card out, hand it to the guy, be like, here you go. And you're like, I don't want you to vote that way. Erase. Does that make sense? Okay. It's originally called the Australian ballot because it comes out of Australia. Okay. This idea of a secret ballot. Okay. We have the direct primary. According to the Constitution, who nominates people for president? The party leaders. The party leaders. Does that make sense? The party leaders. And originally, it's a very small caucus of party leaders. Does that make sense? Who nominates? Then it becomes a larger caucus. Okay. Um, now, but those people go directly to the vote. There's no primary. Does that make sense? Because of the direct primary, we're going to see it to where now we have lots of different Republican candidates or Democratic candidates. And if you're a registered Republican, you can go and vote on all of those different candidates. Does that make sense? And then vote for the Republican candidate that you want. And then that person is the person that winds up running for office. Does that make sense for the presidency? Okay. Was the Constitution written after George Washington was president? No. Okay, well then why would he, didn't he say in his final speech on political parties that in the Constitution he said that they would be chosen by the... The president would be chosen by a small caucus of people. Not a political party caucus, but by a small caucus of, of people. Does that make sense? Their, their intention was, we're going to have, like... Those people who are most educated and, quite frankly, are white male property owners, those are going to be the people that say, okay, we're going to ask George Washington to run for president. Does that make sense? Okay, and you're right. George Washington doesn't want political parties. So it, it, their not, intention is not the party system at the time. Does that make sense? Okay, in, in the Constitution itself. Um, we see the initiative, referendum, and recall, which is the IRR. Um, both the direct primary and the IRR come out of Wisconsin under a guy by the name of Robert LaFoyette. What's IRR said for you? Initiative, referendum, and recall. Initiative, referendum, and recall. What does that mean? And we're going to talk about that, right? Yeah, spell referendum right. Uh, I'm trying to see if it's someplace else in here, but I don't think it is. <laughs> nope, I do have it later. So we're going to come back to it, okay? Just think initiative, referendum, recall, okay? We see the decline of the political machines, passage of the 17th Amendment, direct election of the senators. So instead of the state appointing the senators, we do. 19th Amendment, again, what was that? Women getting the right to vote, okay? We see laws protecting workers, the 18th Amendment, to greater development of schools, okay? Public school systems and being more publicly funded. We see juvenile court reform. So rather than juveniles being tried in adult courts and then going to adult prisons, here's a novel idea. Maybe we should treat children like children even if they do a commit a crime. Does that make sense? Because maybe there's this thing that isn't fully developed yet, although they don't really understand that part of it yet, but they get the kids are kids, right? Um, we see the development of Child Labor Acts, worker safety. We will see the passage of the Forest Reserve Act, okay, under Theodore Roosevelt, the Pure Food and Drug Act, which I already talked about, the Meat Inspection Act. Um, when VUS would start setting up um, work day limits, does that make sense? Okay, um, Buchanan v. Worley, uh, which again is a workers' rights thing. Does that make sense? Which we'll get to those and talk to those. Economically, we see the passage of the Clayton Antitrust Act, which is a follow-up to okay to the 
Sherman Antitrust Act. Sherman Antitrust Act and Clayton Antitrust Act were both designed to break up large, big businesses. But in its initial use, the Sherman Antitrust Act was used to break the backs of the unions. It is not until Theodore Roosevelt comes along that we see the Sherman Antitrust Act used to break up big business. Does that make sense? In support of the unions that were once like torn down by that. We see the creation of the Federal Trade Commission. Okay, The ICC is a part of the Federal Trade Commission. Okay, the Federal Farm Loan Act. Sixteenth Amendment, that was what? Income tax, okay. The Keaton Owen Child, or it should be Keaton Owen Act, but it's also Keaton Owen Child Labor Act, which outlaws child labor. Again. Okay. So, okay. This one limits uh, limits child labor. That one outlaws it um, and makes it a lot more rigid. And the Underwood Tariff, which was designed to protect us from outside. Uh, trade, etc. Now, the vast majority of the progressive legislation occurs through the course of um, three presidencies, okay? So, we usually think of the progressive presidents as Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. Those are the progressive presidents. Does that make sense? However, every once in a while, we will throw William McKinley in there too. Okay, does that make sense? Although there's not a whole lot that occurs in William McKinley's presidency, there is some stuff in William uh, McKinley's presidency, uh, just not a lot when it comes to progressive. However, it, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson Oddly enough, here we're being progressive, right? We're extending democracy to the citizens of America. All three, or all four of these guys, are also our imperial presidents. So we're not going to talk about imperialism just yet, but understand that during the progressive era, imperialism is going on at the same time. So it's kind of a weird dichotomy because it's, here, let's extend democracy to everybody, except for if you're somebody from Hawaii, because we're going to take over your, your country and take it as ours. Because pineapple and sugar cane. No joke, Dole. Sanford B. Dole takes and declares himself the president of Hawaii. Pineapple, okay? <laughs> sugar cane also, but pineapple. Okay? Yeah. Okay, um, Philippines, same concept. Hey, we're going to fight a war against Spain, and we're going to help you gain your independence. Um, jokes, no, actually, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep you and keep control of you until 1946. So that's when we get all the islands, like Guam, Americans. Yeah, Guam, American, Samoa, Midway, the Philippines, Hawaii, um, Puerto Rico, uh, we get uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, um, the American Virgin Island, or the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, etc. Did we say the Guano Islands, the Bat Poop Islands? If we didn't, we need to remember those ones too. Okay? The Guano, the Bat Poop Islands. Okay, the Guano Islands. All right, so understand, right? Here we've got all of that, but we've also got this going on at the exact same time. And I always think that that is really, really odd. Does that make sense? Let's create change. And these presidents are the same guys that are advocating for this, but yet they're also advocating for this. They did.